Welcome to Arise Shine. I'm so excited we're here again, ladies. <laughs> yeah. So fun. You know, what a joy it is to be able to, to just know that we are the conduit of his glory, mm -hmm. that we truly are the vessels of his love, of we are his hands, his feet, that we get to live out Isaiah 60, verse 1, where it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. He does that. He, it's him, Holy That's Spirit, right. as we, as we submit ourselves, as we say, yes, Lord, have your way in us, as we grow in that relationship with him and, and develop that, that intimate time with him, we are growing and understanding his heart of knowing what matters to him. And in that, we live out his glory and live out who he is. And we are, then we do become as his sons and daughters, his hands, his feet, his voice. Mm -hmm of love and truth and that we get to do that that's mm -hmm. just so cool and, and along with that i just wanted to read um a word just over us quick of what what that looks like you know he promises in his word and he says that he would unveil within us unveil within us the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. That's who he is. Unlimited riches of his glory. So he's pouring himself in, into us, limitless. <laughs> so that in our, you know, yielding to Holy Spirit and him working through us, we will reveal and reflect him to That's the world right. and mm -hmm. to each other. And that is so cool. And so we just thank you for joining us today and we invite you into our conversation as we process these truths and, and just encourage each other and how to live them out in our everyday life. I'm Rebecca Ballard. I'm Mary Gollinger. I'm Kathy Hollanday. And I'm Barb Milroy. You know, last week we talked about prayer and kind of began that journey of, of prayer and how um, it really is about relationship. Prayer is that communion with him and building that relationship with him. And just a little side trail, um, this morning as I was praying and just talking to the Lord and asking him, God, you know, do you have anyone on your heart? Is there anything you want to speak to someone? And right away, I just felt like the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, Jill. He said, tell Jill that I have her son in the palm of my hand. That you can, Jill, you can trust him to take care of your son. That he's got it. He's got him. And you can let go and release that anxiety and that fear for your son. Jill, he's got him. He's got him. And he wants you to trust. God wants you to trust him fully with your son. And as you do that, as you release that and trust him with your son, you are going to experience a peace, a peace that transcends understanding. And you will know that God just wrapped himself right into you. And you will also know that he wrapped himself right into your son. So trust him, Jill. He's speaking to you and he's speaking to him. And that is how personal our God is. Mm -hmm. He's a personal, he personal is. God. And that is, part of what we're going to continue to talk about today as we get into this. All right, one, two, three, go. Let's <laughs> talk. Hey, yeah. uh, well, last time we left off on authority, and we were going to talk about that today, but I thought before we talked about authority, we should talk a little bit more about how Jesus taught his disciples to pray and in the Lord's Prayer, and that will lead us into authority. But as I was studying that again, you know, every time you go back to very familiar things, you always find something new. And it's been really exciting to just go back even to the Lord's Prayer mm -hmm. and learn new things that I haven't ever thought about. And so I was thinking about how Jesus, if he prayed, then we probably need to pray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If he did it and needed to do it, then yep. we probably even more need to do it. Yep. And so, you know, looking at the Lord's Prayer, I was thinking... The disciples came and asked him, Lord, how do we pray? And you don't find the disciples saying, how do we cast out demons? How do we heal the sick? 
How do we share the gospel? They didn't ask Jesus those things. So I thought, well, why, why not? And I realized they watched him do that. You know, they Mm. watched him heal the sick. They watched him cast out demons and he modeled that to them. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus went off to pray, he went by himself. Yes. And so I think what the disciples were saying is, what are you doing (laughs) when you go sit on that mountain all Mm -hmm. night long? And, you know, I was looking up some of the scriptures that I couldn't get to print on my printer. And um, let's just, you know, rehash a few of these. Uh, One of them says, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. So that suggests he was there quite a while. (laughs) See, he was modeling prayer, being mm -hmm. alone. Being alone. With God, Mm -hmm. his Father. Exactly, and that was in Matthew 14, verse 23. In Luke, he says, one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. I mean, how many of us have, we've done it a few times, actually, at church and Mm -hmm. maybe, but this was a common thing for Jesus to do. He spent a lot of time by himself with the Lord. Um, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And that's in Mark. And then... Um, I think right before leading into the Lord's Prayer, it says Jesus was yep. praying in a certain place. And then when he was finished, the disciples said, Jesus, teach us. So they're saying, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And I think I read somewhere that based on scripture, they kind of figure that the Lord probably averaged four or five hours a day in wow. prayer. So I don't think he was up there repeating the Lord's Prayer over and over and no, over and over no, again. it was communion. It was relationship. It was all about, yes, relationship. You know, if you have a relationship with someone, it's not about repeating the same word. We don't repeat our vows to our husband every day. Or <laughs> it's mm-hmm. about living it out. Yeah. So I think... Well, and he knew he, in, in spending that time with him, he was getting to know his father. You know, and demonstrate mm-hmm. that he, because when he said, if you see me, you'll see my father. If you know me, you'll know my father. Well, he, because he was demonstrating all the character of his father. He was knowing what his father was saying. He was knowing what his father was about. He knew his father. And so he was living out those characteristics mm-hmm. and aspects of his father, which is what we get to do. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. in our communion with him, in mm-hmm. our relationship that grows with him, we're going to know him and know what matters to him. And so we live it out in, in all the things that we do and say and live. And that's what he was doing, doing for the disciples. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. We get to mm-hmm. spend mm-hmm. time with God alone. Yes. Jesus, like you do this too. You go mm-hmm. out alone. And he said, don't do it out in public and with your many words and babbling for everyone to see. Go into that private place alone mm-hmm. and establish that intimacy with God yourself. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought we could dissect now that prayer he gives them, yes. which I said he didn't. Yep. I'm sure he wasn't babbling it over and over again. And so I thought of it, you know, I think it's like an outline. And if you've ever seen an outline, you have point A, point B, point C, and then they have several points under each yes. point. Yes, yep, yep. So God was, I think Jesus was just giving them the outline. But we have to fill in the outline, and that's what he was doing in those four mm-hmm. or five hours or more. So I'm sure it was more sometimes, and less at other mm-hmm. times. I'm sure there were a few times he just had time to, you know, throw up a few words of thanksgiving or praise. Or I had an idea, too. I think he, he modeled also taking the first part of the day for him, and not everybody can mm-hmm. do that. Not everybody can get up and pray and spend time with the Lord the first part of the day. But I think there's something about the giving God the first fruits of your day, mm-hmm. first place in your day, whether mm-hmm. it's getting up at 3 p.m. and going to work mm-hmm. at 7 and you have, that's the first fruits of your mm-hmm. day first. Jesus so modeled that. I mean, practically. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think part of that, <laughs> I used to say to Dave when I'd lay in bed, and I'd be like, 
I really don't want to get out of bed yet because if I just stay here, I will only make one mistake. But if I get up, I'll just continue to make many of them. <laughs> but, you know, that was my negative view of things. But obviously, you know, I'm not, that's not what I mean. But laying in bed, before I even get out of bed, I just open my eyes and I thank him. You know, thank mm -hmm. you for the day. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord, that you have this day in hand. And yep. I make myself available to you. And you know, interrupt me. I'm interruptible. You know, I just speak out things to him before I even get my, you know, swing my feet over the bed because it is, it is inviting him into the day before it even begins. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, and then you're, you're moving with him already. Yep. Yeah. When I get up in the morning, I a lot of times have a, a song going over in my head. And then I, you know, when, after I get ready, I sit down and I write. But um, what he's saying to me, you know, and it, but it's just like it's drawing. Just embraced mm -hmm. into your day. You know, that's very interesting because when you move into that piece you're talking about, you're on like a track with him. And I love in the Passion Translation, I think it says in one of the Thessalonians, make my life a life of prayer and that's kind of what happens mm -hmm. if you give him the first part of your day you will notice yourself praying more throughout the day without even thinking about mm -hmm. it that's true so your life becomes a life of prayer yes mm -hmm. yeah for many yeah. many days in my life before i was retired i had i was blessed with a commute of 30 to 40 minutes mm -hmm. and just to pray in tongues and to pray instead of um talking to traffic or <laughs> doing whatever mm -hmm. you know it's just you know finding those mo moments mm -hmm. where you can um, yeah pray and give give things to him so. and, and we just have been saying that prayer is relationship and you said it becomes a life of prayer mm -hmm. a life he becomes a life for us. we're not mm -hmm. Jesus isn't something that we do an hour on every Sunday he's our life yes mm -hmm. Amen. So it's it's a life of Jesus, a life mm -hmm. of prayer and relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it like Mary said, like the first fruits, mm -hmm. when we give God the first fruits of our money, He says He'll He promises to multiply that. Yes, so and He'll bless him, the rest he'll of bless it. Bless the rest. So I think the same principle applies to our time. Absolutely. If we give Him the Absolutely. first fruits of our time. We can expect Him to multiply. And you know another time. thing, he's such a, you brought it up, he's such a personal <clears throat> God. He, everything he does is personal. Yes. For each, because we're different, he made each one of us different. And he, he's our father, but we each have a different relationship with him. I have two daughters and I have a different relationship with both of those girls. And he's so personal. And, and because he's so personal, I can see his personal fingerprint in my whole day. Personally, mm -hmm. he's a personal God. He's yes. unique yes. and individual, and he treats us as unique individuals, and he loves us as unique individuals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, that's a good segue into the beginning of the Lord's Prayer. Like you said, your children, you have a unique relationship with them, mm -hmm. and God, we address him as our Father. So I think it's important that we realize when we, you know, Jesus is giving the outline now, Mm -hmm. In the very beginning is our Father. And so we start by being God conscious, not me conscious, not sin conscious, not problem conscious, because that's, that's usually right. the first thing we think of is our problems or what's going wrong or mm -hmm. what do I need. Or, but God's inviting us to approach him first on his terms as our Father. And I just was kind of blown away when I started you know, just thinking about it, praying about it, reading about it. You know, what does that mean to, a, you know, come to God as our Father? Um, so, first of all, I think of a father as a person of intimacy mm -hmm. and also, you know, of authority. Mm -hmm. You know, we obey our Father and He's also mm -hmm. our protector, our provider. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I jotted down, I started trying to think of everything you know you think of as a father uh you have immediate access usually to your father you don't have to call and make an appointment usually <laughs> you know sometimes you know a dad you may have to call your dad at work and i bet he would put you through yes. right away he's not yep. going to tell put you on hold 
Um, some might, and we'll get to that in a minute, but you just think of intimacy, protection, provision, security. Yes. Um, provision, um, someone who gives you gifts, someone who celebrates you. Yes. Comfort, um, wisdom, healing, rest. Think of curling up on your dad's lap, not saying anything. You know, we talked about that too, how maybe Jesus was even dozing off a little bit up on that mountainside <laughs> and just resting yeah. in the Lord's presence. Um, he's also a place of instruction. Our dads teach us things. Mm -hmm. Our dads give us direction in life. You know, they give us advice. Our dads, I think we have a privileged place as being the daughter than you have if you're not, you know, within that family. So there's a lot of things we think of when we think of father. Yes. And a lot of people, I know, you know, we've done some sozos and you've done more than me, but a lot of guys that, you know, from Teen Challenge or anybody, all of us, yes. have issues with this prayer right away because it starts our father. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't have a father mm -hmm. or they had an abusive father or they had an absent father mm -hmm. just or a, just someone who was, wasn't very kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A warped understanding yes. of what father is. Yeah. yeah, and so I think we have to go and look to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Mm -hmm. And so our example of fatherhood is Jesus. Yes. So we have to kind of put our earthly father aside, even if they were good. Because mm -hmm. Jesus says, if your father will give you good gifts, how much more? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will I give you? So even a good father is not the best example mm -hmm. of God the Father. So I think we just need to set our fathers aside and look to Jesus as that example and everything he is. That's good. That's good. He demonstrated the Father mm -hmm. to them, and he demonstrates him to us mm -hmm. and, and all of his character. Everything you just said is what Jesus demonstrated and lived. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we can trust that that is our Father God even if our fathers on earth are not. Mm -hmm. We can trust and believe that because Jesus demonstrated it and it, and it, it is who he is, that is who our father is. When I was first saved, um, I was surprised um, by God as he could, because he revealed himself to me. Um, I was on my front steps and I threw up a prayer that I just prayed not expecting anybody to answer. And the next morning on my front steps, I opened my mailbox and there was some money and my neighbor came down to offer babysitting. And so all the things that I prayed the night before um, were, appeared and I didn't wow. know anything except God, you're wow. real. Yes. You heard me and wow. you answered my prayer. And in my heart, I could feel the presence of the Lord and in my heart of hearts, you know, I said, I will look for you wherever you are. And that started my journey. Wow. You know, and so in, even in my prayer life, at the beginning of my prayer life, um, the Lord was just very gracious to me because I had abandonment issues with my dad. You know, I've got good, some wonderful memories now, but, but Jesus was in the forefront and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And then at different times, they switched places. And so um, I had visions of the Father, you know, and uh, um, I walked through forgiveness with my own father. And I, I started a relationship with the Father, not just mm -hmm. Jesus. And then later on, the Holy Spirit came forward. And so, you know, he didn't force himself on me. He, he took me where I was at and brought me to where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And so now, even with the forgiveness of my earthly father, I have wonderful memories of being a little girl and singing singing with him on the, at the piano. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you oh, know, I could oh. feel the close with that closeness with God the Father now. And then I also, um, <clears throat> um, my father, my earthly father, shampooed my hair when I was tiny with halo shampoo because I was his little <laughs> angel. And, you know, and the first time was to get the sticks and stones out, but the second time was to make it gold. And his, his words were so affirming and gentle with me. You know, and, you know, he didn't take the brush and just <laughs> pull it through. So, it, that relationship with God the Father and my earthly father was a process of healing. 
mm. in my life. And it just yes. is so sweet. You know, I feel this presence of the Father, and I just can curl up in his lap and just feel so safe and warm. But that wasn't the way it was at first. Mm -hmm. But God helped me do that. But look where it started was God, God provided yeah. in ways that surprised you. Absolutely. You know, he, he, he heard you, he knew the need, and he just, he just loved on you. Yeah. And he provided, and he, but he knew that that was a beginning of a journey, that you would let him in. But yeah. mostly he just revealed himself to me, like um, he did with Hagar, that, that, um, that I'm a God who sees you. Yes. And just that, that presence of the Lord, when I wasn't even looking for him, you know, was just changed my entire course of my life. And that I just feel right away to say, he sees you. Mm -hmm. He sees you. Mm -hmm. In all of the doubts, the questions, the insecurities, he sees you, he knows you, and he hears you. Mm -hmm. Jill, he sees you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, so do we have, where can we go from here? <laughs> um, so that's something to think about then is how do we, do we pray our Father or do we pray Lord or do we pray Master? Um, kind of looking, you know, at yourself and say, how do I pray? Because that kind of reveals something about how you relate. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, to God in prayer. And if you can't go to him and say our Father, then maybe you do need some of that healing mm -hmm. work to be done. And well, ask him to do that with you. And that's the key. If, mm -hmm. if you're recognizing that, wow, I, I'm not, you're personal with me, but I don't know how to be with you. But God, show me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just ask him to show you mm -hmm. how to get there or yep. what needs to heal. And he will. Mm -hmm. He will. He Absolutely. Will. Yes. Um, and so then we can look at the other little three-letter word, our. And I just thought, so Jesus isn't saying, go to him and say, my father who art in heaven. He says, our father. But he had already told him, now go off and pray by yourself. So what does our father mean? And I was, you know, then you think of the verses that talk about how we come to Jesus or come to the father through Jesus. Yes. And that it's Jesus righteousness that, um, let's find the Ephesians 2.18, through Jesus we have access to the father. And in John 4, 14, 13, I will do whatever you ask in my name because I go to the father. Mm -hmm. Jesus already has that established relationship with them. So as we pray, our Father, it's like Jesus is right there with us, praying with us, yes. agreeing with us, interceding with us. We're not just there alone. We have everything Jesus that prayed for. That is so good. Well, so as when we he was saying God, that to them, he, he was saying, I'll be there right mm -hmm. with you. Exactly. So even though I'm up That's there alone good. and you're there alone, I'm with you in prayer. Yep. Yes. I'm supporting you in prayer. I'm in, interceding for you. And you know how often it, that picture of him standing on our behalf. Yes. You know, saying, I took, I, I'll take the blame. So as we go, we can't let sin or anything get in the way because Jesus is saying, no, it's my righteousness. You know, my for, I, you're forgiven because of what I did for you. So, so when we go to him, we're not just my father, it's our father. I'm here mm, with good. Jesus, mm -hmm. and Jesus is here on my behalf. Yes, so, and that's good. Also, I think it reminds us of family. Our Father, we're all praying this together because mm -hmm. we're also all family. Absolutely. So, our Father, we got through those two words, <laughs> yeah. um, in heaven. So, we have these problems here on earth. We don't need any more help from anyone here. No. You know, we want help from above. Yes. You know, Jesus yeah. is seated in heavenly places, far above every principality, yes. far above every ruler of this earth, far above the rulers of the second heaven, all the demonic powers. So when we say in heaven, we're, we're appealing to this higher power, mm -hmm. someone who's out of this world. And um, I always like to think, too, of he has this perspective of looking down and seeing the big picture. And we can only see what's in front of us, you know, but... Like, you know, we're in the maze and we can only see the road right, blocked here right. and the road blocked here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, God's the Father's up here and he's like, go turn around and turn left. Because mm -hmm. he sees it all from a heavenly perspective. So 
that's what I like to think of when I think in heaven. You know, mm-hmm. God's got the whole the big picture, mm-hmm. and He wants to share it with us. Um, and again, it reminds us of His authority in our life. Just yes. like a father has authority, He's establishing Himself as an authority, and um, we are too when we do that. You know, just mm-hmm. and we're not going to just pray this prayer. But when He says, "When you pray, just acknowledge that mm-hmm. you are my Father, and I'm here with Jesus, and you see all." Mm-hmm. You know, just acknowledging that is in our spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brings us to a place yeah. of trusting. And now we have the next phrase, hallowed or holy, which is another word for it, be thy name. Uh, the Passion Translation uh, reads, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. That's so good. The glory of your name. And so... In previous weeks, we've talked about the names of God and how he reveals himself through his names and how you can't really separate his character from his names because his names demonstrate all mm-hmm. his attributes. Yes. Right. So as we go to him now, we're going to him in worship. It's all about who is God? Who are you for me? You know, who am I praying to? So God's like, when you go to him, you're we're putting in front of us everything that we need Mm -hmm. we're recognizing it we're recognizing him as our provider and as all those things a father is and as holy and you had something to share about this i think too the um the song that was on my mind when god gave me this word uh, back in march was it was the king of glory come and so um uh, the lord said the truth will be revealed my presence moves strongholds and clears the atmosphere yes Clarity will displace the spiritual fog. Vision will displace the spiritual darkness. I am coming with my glory. Mm. There is healing in my wings, Malachi 4.2. There is provision, prosperity, direction, unity, and vision. My glory will displace poverty, lack, chaos, division, and darkness. Fear cannot stand in my glory. I'm... Um, blowing in the winds of change with my own breath. It will begin to happen quickly and and increase. My glory will be like a magnet to bring home those that that are yours. I call them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Come to the Father's house. A place is saved um, for you at my table. Hear my call. Come. So the glory of God the presence of God ushers in all that we need and dispels all that we don't need. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's oh my gosh. wonderful. And when Moses asked to see God's glory mm-hmm. in Exodus, he said, you know, show me your glory. And it says that the Lord passed before him and proclaimed his name. Mm-hmm. So his name it is who he is. It's mm-hmm. all his attributes. So I'll, you know, under this part of the outline, we could go on for hours, mm-hmm. praising and worshiping him, exalting him, magnifying him. And what is this doing for us? It's building our faith. It's mm-hmm. building our relationship. It's putting ourselves, like you said, in humility. Yeah. That's, so, that's so key because when, you, when we come into that place where it says, come into his presence with thanksgiving mm-hmm. and his courts with praise, when we come into that position, that posture of oh, our Father, <laughs> you know, you are glory. Mm-hmm. You are, you know, I praise you. I acknowledge your majesty. Mm-hmm. When we come into that place of praise, you can't help but be in a position of humility. Mm-hmm. You can't but help but be in a position of, you know, only you, God. Because, yep. you know, there's just that element of awe. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think to some degree the church has lost that yes. awe and mm-hmm. wonder of who mm-hmm. God is. Mm-hmm. But if we if we came in, you know, when when we come mm-hmm. into that into His presence and begin with that place of praise, begin with that place of thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. You come into you're you're bringing in the atmosphere of awe and wonder and praise, and and it's then that His glory reveals mm-hmm. and yeah. and cleanses and do mm-hmm. does all that you just read that it does. And that, I think, is what Jesus was trying to say, is come to the Father when you pray and acknowledge who he is. Mm -hmm, And in that acknowledgement, we will be brought right into his very heart. Mm 
I think that's so right on. I think it it, it points out our dependence upon him yes. when we praise. The other aspect of it that I have felt very strongly when I start out in the morning praising with the Lord, I just absolutely sl- sense that my the praise, not my praise, but the, the God's response into my praise is he's plowing the road mm-hmm. ahead yes. of me. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Plowing the road. Mm-hmm. And the scriptures also say that God inhabits the praises of his people. Yeah. So we are, in praising him, we're inviting his very presence mm-hmm. to yeah. come and inhabit, mm-hmm. you know, our presence. So, so we and, actually know who, who we're praying to, mm-hmm. and we're feeling his presence at the same time to yes. lead mm-hmm. us on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. And, and he inhabits our praises. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Inhabit. That, um, that's that means he just, oh, you know, mm-hmm. wraps himself right into us. Mm-hmm. And that's where we get increased vision and understanding. That's, right. that's where we hear him more. Because in our praise, we invited him in. He's inhabited himself in, with us. Mm-hmm. Paved the road, moved everything away that is not of him and moves us forward. Mm-hmm. And that helps to, when you, like you said, plow the road, we're going to know what's God and what isn't God Mm -hmm. because we've just magnified him. We've just put his character out in front of us and we know his goodness, his kindness, his, all those things. So then we're going to, now we're going to be able to hear more clearly. That's right. Mm -hmm. And discern what's God and what isn't because we've already magnified him. And we've, you know, in and our own eyes. For me, for me, what's key to know too is how this is choice. Mm-hmm. You know, there are many times where I'm grieving or I'm sad or I'm mad or, you know, there's just mm-hmm. all these emotions that are swimming around in me. But I know where I need to be. I That's need right. to be in Absolutely. His presence. I know mm-hmm. that it's His peace I'm longing for mm-hmm. to, to, you know, quench the the emotions that are raging. So in in even in the middle of all the emotions, we can come into His presence and just say, "God, I praise You." Mm-hmm. It isn't it isn't always because we feel to praise Him. That's it right. is the choice mm-hmm. to praise Him, there you and go. He inhabits that choice. Mm-hmm. And it's then that, like you said, that then we hear more clearly, we see more clearly, and it just cleanses and washes away that which has hindered that. Mm-hmm. So I, I just encourage all of us that, you know, you praise him in the storm. That's right. You praise him out of the storm, you praise him in the storm. That you, he is worthy of our praise. And it's that praise that pushes out everything the enemy wants us distracted with and draws heaven to us. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to reiterate, too, that he's a personal God and he wants us to hear him. Yeah, he he yes, talks he to us. He's always talking, but we don't always hear him. Usually, it's that first word we hear. Mm-hmm. But um, he wants us to hear. He yeah. wants he wants to talk to us because he loves us. And a lot of people don't know that that God really speaks. Yes. He does yes. mm-hmm. all yes. the time. <laughs> I mean, we know Jesus heard him because he yeah. says, "I only do what I see the Father doing, or what I hear the Father saying. I only mm-hmm. say what I hear." So if Jesus heard, then we should expect to hear. Yes, yes. that's mm-hmm. good. You yeah. know, so another thing I was thinking about his name is that, you know, one of the commandments in the Old Testament was not to misuse his name. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because if we do that, we misrepresent him because his names are who he is. Mm-hmm. That's true. And so that's I think good. it's important that we know who he is so that he's not misrepresented and we can't just flippantly use his name the, you know the scripture even says in matthew that not everyone who says to me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness so there again there's the aspect of actually obeying the father and not mis- just using his name for gain. You know, I think that's, that's right. what they were doing. They were using his name outside of relationship. Wow, that's you know? right. And, and I think it's important, too, um, that you take your thoughts captive, that uh, in, in obedience to, to the Lord. And uh, I want to read Philippians 4, verse 6. It tells you what to do with our thoughts. And it says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. 
be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith filled with requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Let him um, tell him every detail of your life. Mm -hmm. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful yes, and respectful, yes. pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. So I like this as a passion translation. I like the wording where you're saturated and you're, you're fixed, you fix your, your thoughts and uh, control that thinking that wants to mm -hmm. um, not use uh, the names of God appropriately or, or, or think things that are ungodly. So this is a, uh, the example that, that they give in Philippians 4. Mm -hmm. And I love it. It says, fasten your thoughts. Yeah, say, what was that phrase again? Fasten your <laughs> fasten thoughts. Fasten your thoughts. And that's kind of where I think pray without ceasing comes in. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. this is an aspect of prayer, is mm -hmm. that focusing on him, uh, worshiping him, exalting mm -hmm. him. And that's partly how we pray without ceasing. We're always putting him foremost in our thoughts. Yes. And his ways yep. and his attributes. Um, so now that leads to your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and this is a phrase that i think many of us have not understood at all I agree. <laughs> for many I agree. years and just the revelation i've had of that phrase over the last five ten years has really changed my life actually um so first of all we think of your kingdom come We've talked a little bit about declarations and declaring what God's will is. And this is almost a declaration in itself. We're not it asking God something. We're saying, your kingdom come. Mm -hmm. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus said to them, when you pray, pray like this. Mm -hmm. So pray like you're, you are yeah, you declaring. Can pray yes. In this manner. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's a good point. Um, and so what is the kingdom? That's the question. You know, a lot of them just, we read it and we think the kingdom come. Well, that, oh, heaven, someday we'll live in heaven. Um, someday in the millennial reign, Jesus, we're praying him to come back during the millennial reign. But it actually, the verb tense they use and the mood, that's a, some grammatical term. <laughs> it means here and now. Oh, it's not future wow. it's here mm -hmm. and now so we are to pray that god's kingdom come here and now yes. when jesus came he said the kingdom of god is at hand it was here now and he was, he was showing them how to do how to live it out well and he was speaking of himself the kingdom of god mm -hmm. is at hand right here it's right here right now mm -hmm. <laughs> here i am and here i am the rule of this kingdom yes so how do we walk this out is the question. So what does it look like? I, I just have an idea. It's very simple, but right off the first thing I take out of that is he's a king mm -hmm. and he has a kingdom. Mm -hmm. In reality, he's a king. He is the king and he has a kingdom. The king of kings. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so he has it, but it's spiritual. Yeah. We mm -hmm. talked about that earlier. It's a spiritual kingdom, but it should manifest through us through because us. we are sons and daughters mm -hmm. of the king of the king and mm -hmm. so therefore we live in the spirit we live in the kingdom of god though we, we live on a natural earth we still if our eyes were open we'd be right in the we middle would. of the kingdom of god because we are of his kingdom so mm -hmm. that's why he says your will be done on earth as it is in heaven he wants to move through us who is living through That's the right. kingdom of God on earth, mm -hmm. <laughs> the now. Mm -hmm. And I have heard, and it is scriptural, that actually um, heaven and the spiritual realm is more real than this. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of hard to understand because we can feel it. You know, I hit mm -hmm. myself, I can feel it, but it's more real than this. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, then you, this is where I think we've missed the boat because we haven't actually taken the steps to bring God's kingdom. That's right. We think God's going to do it himself, 
where mm-hmm. we say, well, God's sovereign, mm-hmm. so he'll do what he wants. Mm-hmm. But he told, he's telling us right here to pray his kingdom to come, to pray that his will be done, and to declare these things. And yes. he's given us authority. Sorry. And we'll talk about that in a minute, too, yeah. after we talk about you know what does that kingdom look like. Well, it says, as it is in heaven. So let's talk about heaven. Do you think, are you going to have cancer in heaven? Mm-hmm. No. Nope. You know, we're not going to grow, well, we have, we grow old on this earth, but there's not, um, no sickness, there's no death, there's no offense, mm-hmm. no jealousy, no anxiety, no anxiety, no insecurity, no, no fear, no fear, yeah, no fear. There's unity. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's no bickering. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves one another. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anything else? Just, I mean, think of There's everything. Affirming one another. There's that friendship, that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. Family. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. one family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I think God's will encompasses. Yes. You know, all yes. those things. Oh, that's true. Love demonstrated victory over all the works of the enemy. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. So that's, if it's steal, kill, and destroy, it's not God. Right. No. And we should be take, you know, bringing his kingdom to reign in those areas. So I think, you know, and we, we ask ourselves. We can. Right. Because he says, as it is in mm-hmm. heaven, let it be on earth. And I think that's, like you said, we've missed it. That It's like, as his kids, we can say, as you have already done this mm-hmm. in heaven, you want this to be made manifest on the earth through us. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are his hands and feet mm-hmm. on the earth. So he wants what he's already been doing and done in heaven to be manifest on the earth. So love is manifest, kindness, gentleness, mm-hmm. family, unity, all of that can be and should be manifest through his sons and daughters mm-hmm. on earth because he's already willed it, he's already done it, and he wants to do it in and through us. I think we do think it's only when we get to heaven. Mm-hmm. But no, he's saying, because you're my children, I am going to mm-hmm. move through you and allow what I've already done in heaven to be made manifest and visible mm-hmm. and happening on the earth, mm-hmm. and the enemy will be under our feet silent. Mm-hmm. So part of that too is the opposite of that would be like if we're manifesting insecurity and fear, then we know that we can be delivered of that through the, the power of God and mm-hmm. through right. the words of our mouth. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I think especially if, we're, if that is keeping us from prayer or keeping us from the relationship with God, mm-hmm. the fear and, and anxiety have to go. Yeah. And in his kingdom, that's possible. Mm-hmm. So yes. a lot of times, you know, in my life, <clears throat> I went through layers of different issues in my life. And at the same time, God was teaching me how to be free from those things, but also showing me I have authority over those things too. Yes. Oh, that's so, good. Uh, yes. so that's a part of the um, releasing our voice and our authority in prayer is to be freed up from the things that mm-hmm. tangle up our feet. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's good. So it starts with us first. Yeah. Yes, yes, Lord, yes. you know, where's your authority in my life over the junk in my life? over yep. the fear, over the insecurity, over, you know, what all those things are we talking about? Maybe my health. Mm-hmm. You know, we start small. <laughs> we start mm-hmm. getting our own lives in order in a sense. And we have authority. We can know that God wants us to walk in peace and all these things. And so if we start there, mm-hmm. obviously, we're going to have more faith to branch out. And Mary, you've always talked about how when we have authority, or when we've been healed of something or we've overcome something, how much more authority and faith we have to pray for someone yes, else. We That's do. So I mean, it's it's a legal precedent, mm-hmm. too. But we do have, I've been healed to completely delivered of mental illness. I've been healed of cancer. I think, I, ha- I feel like I have authority to pray for people in those areas mm-hmm. and to be able to see healing. But I also feel like we, we have all been given some blanket authority we mm-hmm. all have yeah. a level of authority mm-hmm. of we actually all have the same authority all the authority that jesus gave mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. it's just that we're not walking in the fullness mm-hmm. right which is sometimes you know because we're not aware or we're not you know 
I think it's progressive as we go through mm -hmm. our Christian walk. We're going to develop, we're going to walk in greater authority. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're all walking in greater authority in prayer and greater authority period than we did five years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's common mm -hmm. sense. Well, and it's, and it's also the trust of trusting the, that your relationship with the Lord, you're trusting and believing that what Jesus did when he went down to hell, took the keys, he took back the authority the enemy had because of the fall. He mm -hmm. took that authority and then he gave it back to us and said, now in my name, you know, walk in authority, mm -hmm. take authority, have dominion, you know. So we have to recognize that, that he, in him, in his name, we must do that. We must take authority over these things, these areas that the That's enemy right. is trying to mm -hmm. manipulate us with, manipulate mm -hmm. us with fear or anxiety or, or those offenses against one another. Those are not of the character of God. So we know they are not of heaven and in this kingdom that we live from. And so we can take authority over that. And, mm -hmm. and that the body of Christ has, has kind of like glossed over that part of our relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. We, we thank him and we acknowledge that he's God and he's glorious, and, but we forget that at, we're his sons and daughters who he wants to live from and move through and love through, and that requires us to walk in the authority that Jesus did and demonstrated. And so that very much plays a part in our walk mm -hmm. as sons and daughters, as Christians. And we've kind of been apathetic or complacent in that and we mm -hmm. the church needs to rise up and be that that's right that's the so church good. that's living in relationship and from that relationship walking in authority mm -hmm. and his glory will be demonstrated in far greater measure than it has ever been mm -hmm. and that authority again is part of purpose like we talked about last yes. week. prayer is about relationship and purpose walking out what he designed us to do and part of that was take dominion and subdue the earth there you go. And yes. so we're, we're going back to the very purpose we're put on this earth when we walk in authority. Yes. So then we talked about what heaven looks like and what are some aspects of that. Well, what did what are some things Jesus took authority over then? Demons. Demons. He cast out demons. Sickness. Sickness. Diseases. Mm -hmm. Diseases. Um, blindness. Deafness. All kinds of lack. leprosy, lack, lack. Mm -hmm. yes, that's multiplied good. food. He provided for the well, that's Old Testament, but it's still a picture of Jesus mm -hmm. you know, providing food. Um, took authority over the weather, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he you know, the storms, the storms. Yeah. he created, he took authority over physics, even. He walked on water, he did, mm -hmm. he turned water into wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing he didn't take authority over. He took authority over death. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, I love the fact that he gave us his mm -hmm. authority, but he said, greater things than mm -hmm. I do, you will do. And that's yes. what Peter mm -hmm. and Paul did. Peter did great, greater things. He walked by people and his shadow healed. Mm -hmm. yes. Paul, they took handkerchiefs from Paul and sent them to people and they were healed. That's the greater things. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where we ever got off thinking that was for then it's now and not for now it's, and then we contend you know, for that for mm -hmm. those miracles yeah so we can look at so what does heaven look like what is what did jesus how did he demonstrate authority how did he bring the kingdom in all those ways oh he destroyed a fig tree by speaking to it and he also actually translated himself from one place to another you know mm -hmm. one minute he's here and the next minute you know the mobs after him he's whoop, he's gone there's Which just is, nothing he, he couldn't yeah, do. Yeah, he took authority over time, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and place and matter, everything. Mm -hmm. So now, like you said, we have authority. We are seated with Christ. We pray our Father, so we're with Him, mm -hmm. praying His authority, for, you know, through what He did. And um, so He spent. Three years talking about the kingdom, the kingdom, bringing the kingdom to earth. And then he talked about the church. And he had never even mentioned the church before in three years. So now all of a sudden he says, the church, you know, the, let's go to Matthew. Actually, I'm not sure this is the first place he uses the word church, but let's see, Matthew 
16. Uh, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. That Again, that revealing yes. of his will. When we yeah. pray, your will be done. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock. So the rock, you know, if we could get into another teaching on that, but the rock of the revelation of who God yes. is, I will build my church. Now, when he says this, the word church is actually not what we think of as church. It's ecclesia. And the very interesting thing is mm -hmm. most people don't know this, but it's been a revelation for us. It's been a huge revelation mm -hmm. for me that the ecclesia, what we are, is the governmental authority of Jesus on the mm -hmm. earth. We're the governmental authority. Mm -hmm. That's why he wants us um, to take authority and use our authority because we have the authority to bring change. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you read that, he said, upon this revelation, this rock, mm -hmm. I will build my ecclesia, the government mm -hmm. of God. And the gates of Hades will, will not, not overcome it. So it will not overcome no. the governmental authority mm -hmm. that yes. I have given. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I have established. And he wants us to operate in the governmental authority mm -hmm. that he's given See, I mean, that's huge. If it we, is If huge. we would recognize that as mm -hmm. the church, we are, be, in Jesus, in, through the power of Holy Spirit, we are the governmental authority of the kingdom mm -hmm. of God here on that's earth. That's right. Yep. And we have acquiesced. We, we have allowed that the enemy to manipulate and control. We've got to say no more as the church, as the ecclesia. We, through Jesus and the power mm -hmm. of Holy Spirit, are the governmental authority of heaven on mm -hmm. earth. And wow, that's huge. And most people don't exercise it because most people, I think you brought it up, but you could speak on this. Most people say, well, God's sovereign and he's in control. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Can you speak on that a little bit? Well, He's not in control. He is in charge, and he's given, you know, he's he. When we give when we give our lives to the Lord, salvation. That is, we've given him my life for yours. So mm -hmm. now I've given him control. I've said your will, not mine. I'm giving you control of my life. That's when he then becomes in control. He's in control of my life because I give it to mm -hmm. him. <laughs> But he's in charge of the earth, and he's given the control to us. But if we invite him into that control, he's able to work and move, and should be working and moving yep. through the church. And if you think of, um, well, let's look at, when he says ecclesia, what the Greeks heard him say, because to the Greeks, this was what an ecclesia was. It was an assembly of people set apart to govern the affairs of a state or nation, mm -hmm. just like a parliament or a congress. So when Jesus said, my ecclesia, he was, they were like, oh, the government. You know, they, they understood that, like yeah. you said, as a government term. To the Romans, it was a group of people sent into a conquered region to alter the culture until it became like Rome. So... We are, he's saying, infiltrate the culture until it's like heaven. Oh, oh wow. Good. You know? That's and good. so that's, that's what Jesus good. is saying. We are to be in this world. That's the job of the church or the ecclesia, the governing body. Now, what we have been is like, you can have, I think of like police officers. They have authority. And it's been delegated to them by someone else. And our authority is <laughs> delegated by Christ. It's not ours. You know, it's been given to us by Christ. But if the police just sit in the police station and never use their authority, evil's going to be rampant right. in the That's city. Right. So it's possible for us to not use that authority and for evil to run rampant. And that's what's happened, I think, in our nation yes. and in this world is we have stepped back and said, well, the church doesn't need to be involved in politics. The church doesn't need to be involved in that. And we have let the devil run the, run the world. 
because we haven't really understood mm -hmm. our role as and our purpose our and our role and our purpose and authority mm -hmm. as the government the governmental authority of Jesus on the earth mm -hmm. and that we can we can do that and live that and what I like is not only the governmental authority on the earth but what you just said in that it shifts the the culture. The culture. That, and, and why did God say that we're salt and light? That we were to affect society. Society wasn't to affect us. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a huge thing when you say governmental authority. It's huge. That is an overall. <laughs> and when it said, um, what you said about the be like heaven on earth, mm -hmm. you know, ah, if we can get that as the church, if we can really understand what Jesus was saying to them, and grab a hold of that as the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it really puts a lot of weight on us to be careful what comes out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can see it with certain people in power when they say things that are not right, they're saying it from a position of power. We have to be careful what we say from our mouth because our words have power. Mm -hmm. As the Ecclesia, our words have power. Well, and if we're going to be the governmental authority of Jesus on the earth, bringing heaven to earth, we're not going to bring manipulation and control no. through, our, through our lives. We're going to bring what Jesus did. We're going to love. We're going to there you meet go. needs. We're going to, we're going, it's going to be the atmosphere of heaven That's right. that we will be bringing into the, the government of society. Mm -hmm. Not not what we deem as government, because yeah, right now if you think government, you think ooh, ew. <laughs> you know, you don't want that kind of authority and takeover. Mm -hmm. But no, it is truly we are to bring the governmental authority, the atmosphere of heaven, as Jesus lived it out to the earth, mm -hmm. and we are the we are the glory carriers, the vessels of mm -hmm. that. And we get to be. We get to yes. And I think that's the beautiful thing that in relationship with our God, we get to mm -hmm. love one another. Mm -hmm. We get to encourage one another. We get to take authority over the enemy and put him under our feet mm -hmm. so that fear no longer has a voice, but hope has a voice. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. So, so I think next week we'll talk about exactly how to do that. How yes. do we take authority and some different degrees of authority because we don't all have the same authority in all areas and we'll talk about that and then we'll finish talking about the lord's prayer and other aspects yes absolutely with prayer so why don't we end in prayer and this is just so fun it is <laughs> just you know having this conversation with each other and inviting you into it it's just really digging into the truth of his word and who we are and, and just how do we live that out in everyday life? So yeah, we'll continue next week. And how does this practically live out? And so we just thank you, Father, for being right here in the midst of us, Lord. Mm -hmm. We thank you mm -hmm. that we are your sons and daughters and that you delight to pour in us who you are, to, to, to fill us, these vessels, Lord God, with your glory and your richness, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus. And we do ask that you would continue to move in and through us, that, that we would be um, just a beautiful demonstration of your love to one another, that we will, not, we will, we will guard our thoughts and our, um, take them captive so the enemy cannot distract, and that we will truly be um, vessels of love and truth and we will not take up offense. We will not take up fear. We will not take up those things that the enemy wants to distract us with. Mm -hmm. We put them under our feet yeah. in, with Jesus' authority. And we, we just lift up praise and glory unto your name, God. And we just speak blessing over those watching, Lord God. We just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just in, continue to encounter each and every one. Yes. That they will experience your glory in its fullness, that you, they will all experience what you have so delighted to show us in that you, your love and your faithfulness and your truth in manifest ways, Lord, in all of our lives, God. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, we, I just thank you, Lord, that you are a God who sees us and hears, hears us. And I pray, Lord, for every person that 
doesn't quite grasp that yet, Lord, that doesn't really know that you're real. Yes. Lord, I pray, Lord, for a manifestation of your presence as they call yes. out your name, as they draw close to you, Lord God, that you would show them, Lord, how real you are and that your presence and your glory can change the atmosphere and change their circumstances. So we thank you, Lord, that you're willing and able yes. to do that. When, when we're, even when we're not seeking you, but Lord, when we're seeking you all the more, that you're pouring out on us. And we thank you, Lord, that you're a personal God. You are yes. absolutely a personal God. And you know how to speak to each one of us so that we hear. So we ask you to open our ears and open our eyes and give us a revelation of who you are. We ask you to reach down and reveal, as we've all of us have already prayed, reveal and manifest yourself to us and make yourself known father that we would hear not only who we would not only know who you are but who we are reflected in your yes. eyes in amen. jesus name thank you lord. amen lord i just also i just pray for a greater revelation of you as father lord and yes that encompasses father that you would just help us to approach you in prayer in that manner lord and just reveal yourself in that way in jesus name Amen. 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 Thank you and God bless you.